how to deal with a high ball. Somebody is just looping the ball back over, looping the ball back over, and you don't know what to do. Totally normal, especially if you're a little bit of a newer player. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to deal with those high balls going from the quote unquote easiest solution to the more complex, more difficult and riskier version. So going from letting the ball drop back into your strike zone to taking balls on the rise. And I'm showing you the footwork patterns and also what the tactical decisions are that you should be making. So one tip right off the bat, because that is what I'm seeing a lot that is basically exacerbating the whole issue with the high balls is that a lot of players, and especially newer players, start way too close to the baseline. Take one, two, three steps back, and you're gonna be able to take the same ball that previously was probably above the shoulder, at least shoulder height. So that's a really quick fix, and you're not gonna get drop shotted to death. And if they try that, well, let them try, let them do something that they don't want to necessarily do or have been doing. And you're always faster moving forward than moving backwards. So adjust your court position right off the bat. So what are the common mistakes if you don't know how to adjust to higher balls? One is that people don't move at all. They're neither moving up to take it on the rise, nor are they moving back to let the ball drop back into their strike zone. So what ends up happening is a lot of this, above the shoulder. Right? Anything that's above the shoulder or below the hip or maybe mid-thigh is much harder to control. So by not moving at all, you're taking balls way out of your comfort zone, way out of your strike zone, and that immediately produces a lower quality ball. Another thing is when the ball comes up above shoulder, people tend to hit down. And whether that's with a full motion or an abbreviate motion, whatever it is, either you miss outright in the net or you give your opponent a shorter ball. So you do not want to hit down. Well, another thing, and that's not necessarily a common mistake as much as maybe not having worked on it and be taught correctly, people use the wrong footwork. If they recognize that it's a higher, deeper ball that will push them back, they're more comfortable moving back, letting the ball drop back in the strike zone, which is a little easier in the very beginning when you're a newer player, but they move back incorrectly or ineffectively. Let's put it this way. They move back this way. And it just takes too long to cover a significant amount of room, of space. So this is not what we want to do. Another common mistake is that people want to move up to the ball, take it on the rise, but they end up short hopping the ball. They literally take it right off the bounce, which is the most difficult thing to do. And yes, do you see the pros do that? But you see them down here. You see them with incredible balance, with incredible strength, and also with incredible coordination, which is maybe not necessarily something that every rec player has. So instead of taking the ball on the rise, letting the ball actually rise into their strike zone, all of a sudden we're taking balls down here. And that definitely is not gonna give you a very high quality ball. As I said in the beginning, we're gonna start with the easiest solution to dealing with high balls first. And that is moving back to take the ball in our strike zone between shoulder and hip. That is usually where we want to control the ball because again if you hit it up here if you hit it all the way below your ankles you're not going to control the ball really well what is the footwork because once you've seen that the ball is coming higher over the net and has a higher bounce you want to drop back as quickly as possible and the best way to do that is with a three-step pattern and that is here you always have your split step, of course, and then a drop step. And that means if I'm a right-hander on the forehand, I'm pivoting on my left foot. 
and I bring my right side back. And immediately as I'm turning, I'm also bringing my racket back because this is what I don't want to do. I don't want to bring my right shoulder back, my right hip, and then move and then be late with my racket preparation. So unit turn, dropping back. The next step ideally is a crossover because you see this here, I can grab a lot more room than with just a shuffle. A shuffle would still be preferable over this. And if I get the copyrights to the Muppet Show song, that's what I'm gonna cut in because that's always what it reminds me of when I see people doing this. Moving on, drop step, cross over and then you shuffle. Because by that time, if you have the proper court position, meaning not necessarily too close at the baseline, one, two, three, and you see how close I am to you now, but you see how far away from the baseline I am, I should be covering most high balls still within my strike zone. So let's do that a couple of times. And you can do that, and I would suggest that you do that. Shadow swing that by yourself a bunch of times. Drop step, cross over, shuffle. Split step, always. Drop step, cross over, shuffle. Just do that a bunch of times. You see a higher ball, high net clearance, lots of room between the tape and the ball, leaving the racket of your opponent. Okay, that's my cue. Drop step here. And if I, by whatever reason, misjudge how deep it is, guess what? I can move forward again. And that is really the difference between this, because then you're stuck, and of course, the drop step. The second benefit of that footwork pattern is that you can still hit an incredibly offensive ball out of a very passive court position because you're dropping into a semi-open stance and you can load very, very heavily off your back leg. And I'm gonna show you in a second, but what I mean is drop here and I can drop, I can load and I can roll that ball heavily. Absolutely rip that thing because you're five, six, seven feet, meters, yards, very far away from the baseline, which means you have more room to hit into. Tip for newer players. If you have not mastered a heavy topspin yet, but you find yourself back here, still controlling the ball in your strike zone, I'm fine if you outright lob the ball back. Both accomplish the same thing. Lob the ball back with almost no spin, but high. And what you want to do with that, and that goes for the heavy topspin as well, is you want to do to your opponent what they just did to you. Get it up above their shoulder. And you want to give yourself time to come forward again. Because another mistake dealing with high balls is that people don't recover forward again. They get stuck somewhere back here at the fence. And then of course, it becomes super easy to hit a shorter ball and get you on that. So by using the correct footwork, drop step cross over shuffle, loading, high heavy, cross court, ideally, or outright lobbing it, you give yourself time to come forward again into a better court position. And again, remember that you don't want to overclose and hug the baseline too tightly. All right, drop step. There we go. I think barely kept that in my strike zone. Oh, we're gonna move back here. And that's a better strike zone. But the problem that you see is how far back I am here. Drop back. Ooh, didn't get back there quickly enough. So maybe I'll adjust my court position if I know that my opponent is doing that all the time. There we go. Yep, didn't move back enough. Had that above my strike zone. But I'm still hitting up on that ball. 
There we go, high, heavy back. Okay. Second choice, riskier, more difficult, but the further you develop in your game, you have to have the ability to take the ball on the rise. Now, why is it more difficult to take the ball on the rise? Well, because you're taking time away from the other person, but you're also taking time away from yourself, right? So instead of moving all the way back here and the ball has time to drop back and slowing down after it reaches apex, top of the bounce, if you're now going up and you're moving up to the ball, you're cutting out a lot of room, but also cutting out a lot of time. So that's why it's beneficial to take the ball on the rise, to take time away from your opponent. And of course, if somebody hits the ball high and heavy, even if you're dropping back, it might not be far enough and you're not getting those balls. So the dropping back and letting the ball drop into your strike zone works better on balls that are not quite as heavy. Now, if you have a player who really heavily rolls the ball, you might be backing up here and it's still bouncing over your shoulder. That is when you may want to choose to move up to the ball and take it on the rise. The ball comes quicker off the bounce and you have to get ready quicker. You have to make the decision, the initial decision, the perception, seeing, oh, this is a heavy topspin, I'm better off moving up. You gotta make that a lot quicker than anything that you will allow to drop back. That is why it's more difficult to hit a ball off the rise. But the more you advance in your journey as a tennis player, the more you wanna work on that. So, a couple of key things. One of the biggest things that I've learned is when you take the ball on the rise, you gotta let it rise. Because moving up to a ball, and then again, as I said in the intro, taking it down here, that's not what you want. What you want is to at least let the ball come into your strike zone, hip to shoulder. Ideal is if you're quick enough, you can then turn the momentum of the point a little bit if you're able to catch it between shoulder and chest and actually hit a very aggressive ball off of that as well. Plus, combining that with a way more aggressive court position, that's gonna really hurt your opponent. There are several footwork patterns that you can use. One thing that you can do is when the ball is shorter but still high is, yes, to use your good old closed stance with a slide step. Absolutely valid. You can use that. Don't let anybody else tell you that the closed stance is dead. It's not. So this is the footwork here. And this is probably a little bit more when the ball is not quite as high and heavy because you're still gonna get it right into your strike zone on the lower end of your strike zone. So again, you pivot, this time also, of course, on your right foot, and then slide. And you'll notice that that gives me a really low and wide base, because the key to a good ball taken off the rise is that you're stable. It's virtually impossible to hit a good ball on the rise if you're stick insecty. Stick insecty. Yep. The other option that you have is a semi-open or open stance. And I prefer those when I cannot take the ball very far in the court and or I also have lateral movement to that ball. Because what I wanna do is, I want to let that ball come up to my strike zone, me moving up to it, but I'm still loading really low because I can use this load to then lift up to the ball and still catch it below shoulder. So that's your open or your semi-open. Depending how you get there, depending on the quality of the incoming ball, depending on the spin of the ball, depending on the height where you take it, depending on the pace. And you'll see that the more of those factors I have, the more difficult it gets. And that's why it's probably a little bit more of an advanced thing to do. So all of those footwork patterns from the back so if I'm able to move up to the ball, I have enough time, I see it early enough, I'm gonna use my slide step. Split step, left foot in front, pull up, slide forward, and go. 
semi open, open stance. Probably coming from a little back here, moving up to the ball, either open or it's a semi open. Tactical decisions on that. To my mind, when you take a ball on the rise, you don't want to change direction. Meaning, if the ball comes from a cross court position, you don't then want to go down the line. I do, unless you're very advanced. If you're in the beginning stages of learning how to take the ball on the rise, go cross court. Or if the ball comes from a down the line position, if it comes from the outside here, then you also go cross court with the added benefit if it came from the outside that you hit into the open court. So I'm getting up there really quickly and that is what happens. I'm hitting down on the ball. Yep, that is super aggressive. They come above my shoulder. I was better. So either one I can choose. So taking that on the rise. There we go. And I may have to shorten up my take back on that or I can really heavily load behind it and pluck it off. We used to call this here, plucking the ball off in German. Wunt up flicken. Not sure what that is in English. Load behind it and then really unleash. And I gotta make sure that that doesn't come above my shoulder, doesn't come behind me, because that ball is really heavy. If you like this video, make sure that you're subscribing. You also click that little bell symbol because that way you know when I'm putting out new content. You can also follow me on Instagram and I'm sure to see you on either one of those channels really soon.